Hey guys, I'm Cohen Heldens, and today we're at Rolling Loud Studios in Miami, Florida. And I'm gonna show you guys a walkthrough video of the brand new BX console Amic 9099. Let's jump in. So here's the brand new BX console Amic 9099. And as you can see, it's laid out the same way as any traditional large format console. So I'm gonna start from top to bottom and explain each and every feature that the Amic 9099 has. The first part that we see is just a simple filter section. We've got a high pass filter, a low pass filter. Our high pass filter can go all the way up to 300 as you can see, and our low pass filter can go from 30,000 all the way down to 4.5 kilohertz. So from the high pass filter that we can see here, we also have two additional features on both the high pass filter and the low pass filter. So on the high pass filter, we have the times three, which will multiply our frequencies times three. So as you can see, instead of 20, it becomes 60 on the lowest part. And instead of 300, it becomes 900 on the highest part. Now the same thing happens on the low pass filter, except it doesn't multiply it by three, it divides by three. So as you can see, instead of 30,000, it becomes 10,000. And instead of 4,500, it becomes 1,500. Other features on this plugin in the filter section are, we can do it on the input, we can do it on the output, but we also can use it to send to our sidechain. So underneath the filter section, we have the gate section, which as you can see, has some traditional features as some additional advanced features. When in our gate expander section, we select expander mode, our hold knob becomes a ratio knob at which we can choose how gentle or aggressive the expander reacts. The release time sets the time at which the gate closes and essentially stops working. Expander mode attenuates the signal with a variable ratio when it falls below the set threshold with a over easy characteristic. Expanders and gates work essentially like a compressor and limiter in reverse, whereby an expander increases the dynamic range of an audio signal by lowering the signal level that falls below the threshold, which we set with the ratio knob. And a gate, instead of increasing the dynamic range, a gate completely mutes the signal when it falls below the set threshold. So moving on to the bottom of the gate, we have a feature of filters. So this is great if you wanna get out some in-between hits, but don't wanna take and get the gate to trigger to, let's say, low-end pop or high-end sizzle, let's say like room overheads, that type of sound. We can dial them in and we can also use a high Q function, which technically overshoots right after the frequency set. So it over-exaggerates that signal, which makes the gate or expander react more extreme to those values. We also have a listen function so we can actually hear what we are sending to the gate or to the expander. Moving on from the gate section, we end up in the compressor section. Many probably already know some of the parameters that are showcased on here, except there's one unique feature that this plugin has, which is the ambience function. I'll jump into that after I explain the other parameters. So we have our threshold under which the compressor starts reacting on anything that goes above the set threshold. We have attack and release times, including an auto release time, which means if you have any audio program that doesn't hit quite around the same times that you want it to release, we can use the auto release so it's program dependent. Attack and release time both can go from very fast to very slow. Think controlling percussive sounds, think slower for more groovy bass sounds. Our ratio control can go from very smooth compression to almost limiting at 16.1. We have a hard knee function, which can help a lot with percussive sounds. Think more of, you know, controlling a kick drum, a snare, that type of stuff. Then we have our ambience function, which basically takes the difference between the signal and the compressed signal. So you can really hear what is being affected and altered during compression. We have a high pass filter, which can come in very handy. For instance, think vocals, proximity effects. You don't want to have anything hitting below let's say 150 hertz because the boomy sound will have the compressor overreact. We don't need that so we can easily dial in some of it so that the compressor only responds to a signal above the set frequency. We have our makeup gain because as you know if you compress your overall volume 
falls down a little bit, use the makeup gain to bring it back to the volume that it was sent into. We have a dry mix signal, which is great for parallel compression, which we all know I use a bunch of. Moving on from the compressor section, we end up in the limiter section. Now, one feature on the limiter section that I absolutely love is right here. It's the clip function. The clip function is ideal for drums because you can make the drums sound much, much more in your face because any signal that goes below zero now gets cut off. And because of those additional harmonic distortions that happen, it makes your drum sounds much, much more in your face, much louder. So that's a great function on here. Now, other than that, we have our threshold feature again, which again sets the threshold upon which the limiter starts reacting. So anything that comes above that set value will get limited. We have our release times, which we can go from pretty fairly fast to extremely slow. Think if you're mixing for TV or film, you want to go very slow. Anything you do musically needs to be much, much faster. Think about controlling an overall mix, controlling vocals, controlling percussive sounds. So underneath, again, we have our makeup gain, which is similar as we spoke about with the compressor, whereby if we limit, our volume drops a little bit, so we use the makeup gain to bring it back to the original loudness that we had. And as with the dynamic session on the compressor, we also have a mix signal here, so we can do parallel limiting, which can have the same benefit as parallel compression. Another feature on the dynamic section is the sidechain link. What it does is the signal that gets sent into the compressor limiter as the control signal for compressional limiting now gets matched. So left and right are equal and the compressor limiter is not gonna react independently from left or right. The other feature is the external key, which basically is for side chaining. So we can send the kick as a control signal into the compressor and have the plugin on the bass so that we can have the kick duck the bass whenever the kick plays. And then we are over here in the EQ section. As you can see, it's a four band EQ and it has some features that I would wish were on other plugins, but I'm glad it's on this one. So let me start actually from the bottom. So on the bottom, we have our EQ in, of course, to enable the EQ. And then there's an auto listen function, which I absolutely love because it enables me to sweep through the frequency spectrum and listen to where I hear any resonances or any sounds that clutter up the signal that I want to remove or any sounds that I believe frequency wise that I want to enhance. So auto listen is very handy to sweep through the spectrum and identify these issues. Then there's a glow feature. You might wonder what is the glow feature? Well, the glow feature gives this nice, big, warm low end when you boost the signal. So the low band of the EQ is shelf by default, but we can switch it to peak. If we want to boost, let's say a kick drum and we don't want to raise any of the low end rumble, we use peak so that we can create just a little bell curve right there at the frequency, let's say 60 Hertz. So moving on from the low band, we end up in a low mid band. Now the low mid band has a really cool feature, which is the notch feature. Notch feature is super handy for very surgical work. Let's say you have a resonance in a signal and we completely need to take care of it. We need to eliminate that. We use the notch filter because it goes all the way down to infinity. So we can get rid of it and never hear it again, which we cannot do with traditional equalization. We have a Q value that can go from surgical to very musical, so very broad. And then the other cool feature is the divided by two. So let's say we have a signal that we still have to address, but we already used our low band. We can now use our low mid band to go in that same frequency range. So instead of 150, we can go down to 75, or let's say 200, we can go all the way down to 50. Moving on from the low mid band, the high mid band has exactly the same functionality as the low mid bands. Having addressed those first three bands, we end up on our high frequency band, which has a sheen function, which almost feels like an air type band, which dials in a really nice, expensive, high end sound sizzle almost in your signals without becoming very harsh, which in general EQs tend to do when you try to boost any of the high end. So the sheen function is really great for that. Again, the high frequency is the same as the low frequency band where it's standard and shelf. We also can place it in peak mode so we can boost a bell curve on specific frequencies that we 
want to boost without boosting too much of the high-end noise or sizzle that we don't want to get. Moving on from the EQ section, we end up in a monitoring section of the plugin. Now down on the bottom is what I would call the dimension section. So we have a mono maker, which is great for any low end material you have in the mix. You might ask why, because basses and kick drum sounds much better and hit better when they're centrally focused. So rolling everything, I'd always say below 90 Hertz and make a mono makes the mix sounds much more focused and the low end much more focused and expensive. Now to the right of it, there's stereo width, which we can enhance the stereo width of anything we run through it, which could be perfect for, let's say, background vocals to widen them a little bit more so that the lead vocal sits more in the center without being clouded up by the background vocals. Then we have our gate expander, compressor and limiter meters, which basically show our gain reduction and whenever the gate or expander is opening or closing. So those are very useful and handy when you're working with the program to see what's really happening on at that end on the dynamic range. Then we have our standard VU meter and our DBU meter so we can see what is happening on our input and on our output. So input and with this button we can also switch it to the output. Having said that, we have the TMT inside, which is a great feature. Usually I load these plugins on every single channel that I have on my session. And then what I would hit is random channel all, which randomizes all the channels so that they sound slightly different from one another, as if you were having the console in front of you with as many channels as your mix. TMT is Brainworks Patent Tolerance Modeling Technology. As you know, with analog consoles, not one channel is the same. Typical channel strip plugins unfortunately only model a specific channel of a console, which results in the same EQ curves, compression times, and frequency and phase responses. Instead with TMT, it models an entire large format analog console, which results in a much more complex and 3D sound. On top of that, we have the total harmonic distortion feature, which we can dial in a certain amount of non-linearities, which is what sounds analog and warm. Next to it, we have the V-gain, which adds in some analog grit. I usually turn it off, but in some signals, it can give a nice low-fi feel to them. Moving on from the left side of the monitoring section right here, we have our input gain, which can help gain stage signals into the plugin, which is very important. We have our phase switch, because sometimes you have a top and bottom snare, kick in and kick out, so one of the channels has to be phase inverse, so you get a much tighter signal. We have a mute, which can come in very handy because sometimes we just want to make sure that what we're EQing is the problem and not something that's surrounding it. So using the mute feature can really help us dial in and hone in on are we addressing the problem on this signal or is the problem surrounding it? And then of course, what I just showed you, you have your random channel, which changes the, the internal channels of the plugin. So if you choose one, it's just this plugin that you have in front of you. If you choose all, it does all the Amec 9099 plugins that you have open in your session. We can switch between analog and digital flavor. I'd keep it on analog because it gives much more warmth and depth to any signal. And of course, finally, we have our output fader, which we can change the volume width and make up for the level that we lost in EQing, compression, limiting. As you can see, this is my new favorite plugin. If you want to try out the BX console and make a 9099 yourself, head over to the Plugin Alliance website today. Okay, Joe, that's fine.